Guys, the Fed has come out and they have kept rates the same. Mo did a video the other day looking at the chances of it and the market was pricing in a 98%, 97.6% chance of them keeping rates the same and that's what they did. However, the market started to plummet. Why did it plummet, Mo? They said they're going to raise rates in the future. They said they're going to raise rates in the future, but now markets yeah. have started to rebound. Yeah. Actually, so the NASDAQ was down as much as 0.8%. Now it's up 0.17. Right. Dow is still down. Dow is still down 0.7%. The S&P, S&P is, is basically flat. Is flat and is not showing for some reason. So guys, remember, inflation numbers came up the other day. Overall CPI beat expectations. Core CPI, which excludes food and energy, which is very volatile, came in above expectations over 5%. So it's a mixed bag. Um, the Fed did come out and say, yeah, we pause, but expect two more interest rate hikes, hikes this year. I did not listen to it yet. I did not read anything yet about what Powell said, but that indication, I, I'm a little confused by that, Mo. Why would they even say that? I don't know. So I'm pulling up the dot plot here. So this is the kind of the projections that they make. So this is the March dot plot dating end of the year, 2023. And you can see the consensus was kind of that 5.25%. This is the one they just released. The consensus kind of went up to oh, yeah. five and a, over 5.5%. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Where did that come from? Because we just had the CPI number come out yesterday. Everything's starting to trim down, especially and energy. Even though core, even was, though core. Still, was still above what they expected, right. it was still down. Right. So this is very interesting. I was not expecting this. Well, remember what uh, Powell said, and I keep repeating what Powell said, either earlier this year or late last year. He said, listen, I'm not going to make the mistake of... Of, of increasing rates by a slower amount. I would rather over increase rates than not. For those of you out there who don't like that, unemployment rate being very low is inflationary. He doesn't want that. The Fed has two mandates, price stability and employment. His job, first and foremost right now, is to get to 2% inflation. I don't know how they're going to sustain 2% inflation. So here's the funny part. You look out into the longer run, post-2025, you're not even, no, there's not one Fed president that's saying it's 2%. For inflation? For inflation. Two and a half percent is where inflation is. Oh, I'm sorry. This is, this is, uh, this that is was a target rate. Okay, let me, let I was going to say. Let me go and find inflation because it is definitely in here. Sorry about that. So guys, historical inflation, I think going back to like 1900 has been about three and a half percent per year. Yeah, it's average three and a half. And the interesting part though is we printed a ton of money, especially in the last five years. Since COVID, the amount of money we've printed has been insane. I'm sorry, but at some point, it's got to, it's got to, it, okay. the, the devaluation of the dollar is what inflation is. And when you print a ton of money, you're devaluing your dollar. There's a lot of talk out there about the U.S. losing its reserve currency status. Frankly, that doesn't bother me. It'll probably happen at some point in the future as other economies in the world get much larger. Mo, go ahead. There is consensus. So longer run is 2%, but uh, even in 2025, there's still a couple of Fed presidents that think it's going to be around 3%. Inflation. And, and, and by the way, Which maybe they're, gonna, they're a healthy number to be there. And maybe that's the case. Maybe it's not. I yeah. have no idea. That's I don't cool. want anybody. Remember, inflation does hurt people because it's basically a tax in the sense of you hold a million dollars, a hundred thousand dollars in your account every year, it loses three thousand three percent of value. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. And remember, I mean, these projections are what they are. Just uh, in March, we saw that the majority of the Fed president said we were going to be at. 5.25% interest rates by the end of the year. Now we're at five and a half. So things can change quickly. We're between so, five so and proje- 5.25 right now. Oh, you meant for the prediction for the, for, of the year. Yes, yes, yes. you are so, correct. So predictions can change quickly. Yeah, and if all of a sudden we see a spike in inflation, I'm quite sure they're going to do something about that. Definitely. But I do give the Fed credit. They said, we're going to raise rates. Powell was being slammed at these House and Senate committee meetings. And he was just like, listen, I'm sorry. Like, we're going to do this yeah. because it's way worse for the entire country to have inflation higher than to have a few couple million people unemployed. And I think he's right on that one. And it sucks if you lose your job. I'm not trying to dismiss that at all. But it sucks even more for the entire country to experience working class families experiencing 6 to 8% loss on their purchasing power. You know, we talked, Mo did a... And Mo goes, you know, to stores now and talks to people for part of our video series. And a lot of people were saying, listen, it sucks. I used to spend a hundred dollars on groceries and now I spent a hundred dollars, but I'm not getting what I used to get. Right. And that's mm. a big issue that the average American has to contest with. Right. And they have to sit there and understand, like, these are the things that the Fed has to balance. And I, the thing that's unfortunate for the Fed is it's a very, very public job. 
now. It's supposed to be an independent thinking body that makes decisions, but unfortunately it hasn't become that anymore. And I don't blame Fed Powell if he gets, I mean, imagine being Fed Powell and every single day people are talking about how much they hit. I mean, look at us. We have a YouTube channel and, you know, a few people comment to yeah. us and it's just like, imagine that multiplied by, and it doesn't bother us, but imagine that multiplied by people who are seriously struggling. Yeah. Who they know that if, that if raising rates have cost them a job. Mm-hmm. That's got to hurt them. Yeah. It's got to hurt Fed Chairman Powell. Markets are creeping higher right now. So we started the video. Oh, my gosh. NASDAQ was up 0.22. It's now a 0.48. Dow was down 0.7, now down 0.46. And the S&P was flat. Now it's up a quarter percent. So uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting to see where... We've seen basically 2% swing today from yeah. up 0.5 to down 0.8 to back up 0.5. I mean, that's 25 Pardon me. 25 3% swing. Right. Big swings, guys. Is that normal? I don't know. But what does this mean for stocks? Well, remember, when stocks were really, really high in 2021, 2020, early 2022, the justification was, well, rates are 0%. Well, guess what? We're basically at the same level we were when we started lowering rates in March of 2021. The S&P was like 4,400. We're there. We're basically there now. Mm-hmm. So I look at it going, okay, is this just a bear market, a bounce in a bear market? You know, I had somebody just tell me, well, the bear market's over. I'm like, I get that the technical definition of the bear market is over, but I still look at valuations. And if you're part of our community here, I report every day what the stock market to GDP ratio is, and it's 75% right now, overvalued. 75% overvalued. That's only happened twice in history, recently in the dot-com boom. And yeah. you saw how the dot-com boom ended up. Yeah, exactly. I don't think, I, even though the technical definition of a bear market ended, I don't think we're in a longer-term bear market. I don't think we're at the end of a longer-term bear market. I still think we're in the, in the throes of it. If you follow me on Twitter below. Let me show you my Twitter because I am very active with Twitter and I show it on and I show things on there and I talk about things. I just posted something that a community member sent me where I talked about, it showed the graph of all the bear markets in history and what's happened and where the, where we currently are relative to it. Remember this bull market has been run by seven companies. Yeah. Those seven companies, That's Amazon, it. Apple, um, Google, Nvidia. Meta, um, what's it called? NVIDIA, Tesla. NVIDIA, Tesla, and Microsoft. Yep, that's They're it. up, the worst one's up like 47%. Right. Year to date. And if you, if I'm not mistaken, you take those out and you look at the other 493 and those are down for the year? Down 4% for down the year. Down 4% for the that's year. That's what I read. So outside of those seven companies, the stock market is down 4% for the year. Is that healthy? I mean, that's the question. Listen, guys, I'm not this, I'm not trying to sit there... At the end of the day, I believe valuations are, dr- are going to drive the long-term results. The less you pay for a stream of, a stream of cash flow, the more money you're going to make. The more you pay, the less money you're going to make. And right now, we're at levels that just don't make sense for the future of the cash flow. And of course, we're hearing, I'm hearing more and more. Today was the most I ever heard it's different this time. Yeah, Today was the most I heard of it. Yeah. And it's probably going to increase it. And AI is the different this time. Guess what, guys? The internet really changed the world. Just like AI is probably going to change the world, but not the same. Internet was the start of it. And guess what? We still had internet stocks falling 80, 90% and more. Yeah. And we, we, you and I were looking at the volume yesterday. Tesla has double the amount of daily volume, basically double the amount of daily volume that Apple has. That's incredible. I mean, if you... For a company that's one third the value of Apple. If I didn't own either company... One fourth. And you put those two companies in front of me, I'm buying Apple, not Tesla. Yeah. And... But that's not the average person right now. Yeah, they're going to go f- follow the hype. Exactly. And Apple just hit new all-time highs. Yeah. yeah. Guys, we're not doing this to be doomsdayers. We're just sitting there saying every investment's a present value of all future cash flow. The one thing we do assure you, as markets fall, we'll be the ones telling you this is good. It's good to have markets fall. You want things on sale. You love buying your favorite clothing on sale. You love buying your cars on sale. You love buying everything in the world on sale. Please make sure you understand that buying investments on sale is better as well. Guys, subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. Mo is, what's yours on Twitter? At Real Mustafa Hussein. At Real Mustafa Hussein. You'll find it off mine. Thanks very much, guys. I appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe.